you and Philip Rocker wrote um, a very stable genius, which was which covered basically the first three years of uh, Donald Trump's presidency. What, why did he cooperate with you for this one? <laughs> Uh, you know, it was pretty much a cinch to get a sit down with Donald Trump, the former president. Uh, we did all our reporting before we went down to see him and before we really actively sought his input. But we, you know, we, we wanted to hear his view and we wanted to fact check some information with him. And what we were surprised by was how quickly he and his aides basically said, sure, come on down. Um, and I, I found it interesting because, you know, you may know, and I think some of your viewers and listeners may know that he called us, you know, a lot of interesting names when our first book came out, stone cold losers, third rate reporters, um, losers was his favorite. So it struck me that, um, you know, it, what is true in his presidency was true after his presidency. He really craves an audience. And especially now that he doesn't have Twitter or, you know, all of these opportunities to interface with reporters every day on the South Lawn. Well, so what was that like? What was it like going down to to talk to him after all of these things were said what was his kind of demeanor and outlook towards you guys i mean was he just craving an an outlet to speak or or did he take in the opportunity to to throw some haymakers <laughs> haymakers nice um i don't know if he's <laughs> capable of that but what i found really fascinating about the visit was just the theatrics of it you know um it became clear to Phil and to me that we'd been invited at a specific time to a specific place for the drama of what was unfolding. One, um, we were asked to come to the lobby of Mar-a-Lago uh, at five o'clock. It happens to be the place where everyone trapes through for dinner, um, the club members, as they enter to get ready for, you know, the raw bar. And so they were getting to see that the president, the former president, still has all sorts of national reporters and others traipsing down to Florida to to hear him, to get an audience. And meanwhile, uh, we were allowed to see all of the people sort of bowing and scraping as they entered to, you know, throw their hellos to him and all sorts of individuals obsequiously walking over to him to tell him how great he is. Uh, so it was a little bit of theater on both ends of the scale i i mean i i i'm trying to hold off on this question uh <laughs> <Don't>. but like <laughs> i mean the guy he i mean the guy's a lunatic right i mean i mean that's like i mean like the the level of psychological desperation involved in trying to prove to the members of your golf club that you are still relevant as an ex-president. Like, I, that just seems like an insatiable, bottomless pit of, of self-esteem issues, right? Like, you're an ex-president. What, what do you need to parade the fact that someone wants to interview you uh, for? <laughs> I like that line, you're an ex-president, right? Because as an ex-president, you're in a special club. I mean, there just aren't very many members. And it's such a rarefied world. It should give you a lot of um, confidence, so to speak. Um, I'm not a mental health professional, and neither is Phil. We don't pretend that we know um, what's going on exactly in the mind of Donald Trump. But what we do know from watching him is just patently obvious. He needs and breathes uh media attention that that oxygen is critical to his survival and because he doesn't have a platform anymore we were another opportunity for him to as he said get the word out you know he's living in this alternate reality where the january 6th was a bunch of loving warm hugging individuals who were ushered in to the capitol by welcoming capitol police officers in his alternate reality as he relayed to us you know there were many 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 thousands of ways that the election was rigged to deny him his rightful second term uh and you know black lives matter protesters were 
evil threats to our country. All of these things are, are baseless, um, but those are the, that's the reality he's living in now in, in his club. Folks, there's more of what you've just saw where that came from. That's if you hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you. Really, thank you.